My name is Musa Adnan, that's Muhammad Hijab, this is Rerooted, and here's what we have coming up for you today. A speaker's corner is controversial. Yeah. It can be damaging for the dawah at times. Yes. Um, it's very argumentative. Arguments yeah. take place there. Yes. Um, people, you go there, people are swearing at each other. People are just treating each other like nothing. It's not a civilized academic discussion a lot yes. of the time. Yes. And there's not much actual real da'wah happening in yeah. Speaker's Corner. Yeah. How do you feel about those sentiments? I think you're absolutely right about all of those points. For me, I, I went into a couple of public debates. And one of the main things that people were talking to me about and complaining about, and yeah. if you, you look at the, look at the comments, is you're not wearing your suit properly. No, nah, not even that. Okay. that that's you weren't wearing your suit properly, was it? by the way. Yeah. Uh, next time, let me help you. Okay, it's not even that. You can help me. For, um, there yeah. is a next time, so you can help me yeah. uh, go to California uh, yeah. Yeah, to I'll do a debate. So what I was gonna say was, um, there was a debate I did uh, w with a particular group of people. Yeah. All right. And I came with a T-shirt. Yeah. A pink one. No, no, no. It was just a blue T-shirt. Yeah. You've worn pink vest before. I don't yeah. know where is okay. that, Isn't that part of your metro thing? Uh, never. You yeah, I thought that would pink. Even if I'm in pink? Miami, I'm not wearing a pink vest, bro. <laughs> is, is you were dressed like you're in Mia no, Miami. No, but if you wore pink, London. no one would say anything to you. No, that's you. That's your pink is you. Do you get it? <laughs> Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> Look at me, bro. Is it starting? <laughs> yes, we started. How's things? Alhamdulillah, not bad. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. It's a pleasure to have you on the Rerooted podcast. Uh, you know, for all of our viewers, I've been very, very excited to film this. You know, we've been doing, you know, a lot of digging, a lot of planning, and um, yes, sorry, it's a, it's a privilege <laughs> to have you no, as man, you're drinking I'm your very, coffee. I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, Ayura is is the first Dawa home for all of us. I mean, uh, in the UK, yeah, and um, it's it's nice to be here, see the guys, see uh, Sabur Ahmed, and you know, uh, Amran Hussein, and Hamza Zosis and Adnan Rashid. And uh, Musa Adnan <laughs> And Man. all those other people That I haven't mentioned Mashallah They mentioned me last I'll, I'll take notes I'll say last but not least Last but not least Definitely So th There's many things You know With you That we can talk about you've, you've been very very active online For a number of years now Yeah But I wanna I wanna go back You know I wanna start the podcast And I wanna talk about Some things maybe You might not have talk, uh, Spoken about You know In the past Tell me about Your upbringing Muhammad Hijab's upbringing. You know, I actually filmed, we filmed an, a podcast with my dad recently, you know. Really? Yeah. I mean, he wasn't, I mean, it's going to sound a little bit whatever, but he wasn't actually an active part of my upbringing in that sense mm -hmm. that maybe like, you know, a nuclear family um, would be uh, used to, like someone part of a nuclear family. Okay. But, um, so it was, obviously I did have a lot of interaction with my dad, but mostly mm -hmm. it was my mum. So my mum was always there, you know, she's, um, she was a str she was a strong single mother that okay. um that basically helped me get to where i am in every single way shape or form we to be honest we were obviously a working class family uh, in the sense that you know um my parents are the ones who came to this country uh my dad my dad was um he had both of them had degrees from egypt and then they went to bahrain for a, for a while and then they came to uh, the uk yeah and um so they had to establish everything from the very beginning and um both of them continued like teaching and learning my dad went on to he's now a professor and so on um he went to manchester university well wow, okay so what did your dad teach um he used to teach like in linguistics but most particularly english is a foreign language okay he, has to, he had to learn when you learn english is a foreign language hmm. you become good at certain things like language acquisition and stuff wow. so that was that's his field um so they kind of established themselves in this country in that way but in that process of doing so, there was a lot of movement, a lot of, it was kind of rough in the sense that we, we had to we, council accommodation, mm. temporary accommodation. Yeah. You know, I remember living in a hotel. Uh, we lived in a hotel for many, t like, because my dad had to go to, uh, back to Egypt. Uh, um, you know, uh, he, he divorced my mom uh, and then they kind of went their own separate ways and so on. So when that happened, kind of like we, me, my mom, my sister and so on, we were moving around from place to place. Mm. And a lot of that was like temporary accommodation, hotels. Do you feel like that shaped you as a person? You know, like going, because that's a little bit rough, right? I mean, p you find that children who, who who are raised in families, you know, that have been separated like that, 
um, may have it harder, you know, than other families where you're all happy, mother, father, going on holidays together. You know, you got this set routine kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, with your family throughout the year. You go on two or three holidays. Like, you know, the way families, typically speaking, you know, the way typical families are expected to do uh, from societal perspective, yeah. obviously not going into all of that. But did you feel like that shaped you, you know, your family being like that? I think that yeah, I'm sure it did. I can't tell you exactly how. I think that's more of like a psycho um, psychoanalytic uh, yeah. dimension or unconscious mind that I don't I, I haven't tapped into myself. Do you feel like you're a strong person? Yourself, a strong girl or strong, like, strong person generally speaking. And I don't necessarily mean physically, <laughs> mashallah, but I mean like uh, mentally. Are you? I, men- do you feel like you're mentally? I think strong? that. I think that uh, if that's that's a good question. I think that really and truly, I think that. Um, I put, I'm overconfident. I know that for a fact. That's one of my characteristics. Uh, but I think that because of that overconfidence, people think that I think of myself as maybe stronger, Arrogant, stronger, or? no, stronger than I than I actually am. But okay. I know that emotionally, I think that we're all quite fragile mm-hmm. in our different ways. And um, I think I would put myself in that category of fragile individual. And the Quran says, "Wa khuliq al insan daifa," where he created the human being weak. But in this context, it was talking about sexual desire and marriage. And obviously, all men are and women, to, some, to maybe a lesser extent, are weak in that sense. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like you know, they always find it difficult to control it. Like from those angles, you know, as young men or whatever, you're always going to find it difficult. But from an emotional perspective, I think that you know, the only thing that I feel on a serious, genuine level, and when you when you ask me that question uh, like that, is is grounding me and giving me kind of a continuity in thought. Is and um, and a stability in mind is the Quran itself and the, and the prayers two things. Do you feel like that helps you from a young age? Uh, the thing is, I wasn't attached to the Quran from a young age. So so tell me about that. Like, uh, how did you become attached? You know, obviously you mentioned you're going from place to place with your sister, your mother. Yeah. What what ended up happening after that? I I always had a curiosity for um to understand more about purpose of life and the ultimate questions in life. Hmm. And we all go through the same things. Like I mean, we all like. I I was born and raised in this country, and to be honest, we had the same exposures to um, non uh, to normative ideas like liberalism, feminism, science, uh, all those things, challenges, and also like the desires element as well. Like yeah. you're growing up in this country, obviously, I went into a, uh, I went to a secondary school here. Yeah, how, a, a how secondary was, school? How was your secondary school? Experience? I was a, I was like a I was a bit of a loud character, you know. I've been excluded many times. So so I like, was quite I was like. I was a naughty kid basically until quite recently. <laughs> Maybe I'm still a naughty kid because I still go to university. I still, <laughs> yeah. still, still, I still get in trouble, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> I was a naughty kid. I was quite loud. Yeah. I went to. Um, I've been excluded, I think, maybe 10 times in Seriously? like temporary exclusions. So, what reasons were there for exclu- like fighting? And that was, you know, I wasn't a violent guy. I wasn't okay. known for that. To be honest, like anyone okay. who knows me and probably watching this now from secondary school days knows that, you know, Muhammad Hijab, or as they call me, Hijab, they used to call me Hijab at that time, you know. Um, the, the proper, uh, the Egyptian proper, name. yeah, how, I, how my name is actually said. Yeah. And um, they, they, I don't think I was ever known for that. Hmm. Not not to say that obviously as a teenage guy, uh, you know, kid or adolescent, you're not going to get into fights and you're not going, especially in, in the city of London. So so do you feel like wh- when did religion start to kick in for you? Because you mentioned obviously in high school you were getting excluded a lot, you were getting in trouble a lot. So obviously you were clearly doing some things you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. When how did religion come into all of this? Praying, you mentioned praying, reading Quran. How where did that all come into the picture? It came from curiosity. Okay, everything was triggered by curiosity. I wanted to know. For me, I, I had this this kind of personality that if I'm going to get into something, I'm going to get into it fully, 100%. Okay. But I need to know that this thing that I'm getting into 100% and going is to dedicate my time to and life to mm. is 100% true. Mm. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. I will lie, that was actually, the, that was the thought process in my mind. It's I was thinking, I'm growing, truth. yeah, my, my, my dad is actually like more liberal minded. And my mom, alhamdulillah, she, she's a practicing, you know, a woman and so on. But if I had decided to be less practicing or if I had decided to be moderate or quote unquote modern, yeah, or moderate or whatever, yeah. If I and obviously I'm, for those who are listening to this and not seeing, I'm using the speech mark, um, you know, body language there. Um, if I had decided to do that, I don't think there would have been any consequences on me, like as a as a person. Do you get it from my family? I don't think there would. My my extended family, a lot of them, they're kind of split into two. Some of them are very like nationalistic, mm. um, secular, and so on, and some of them are 
um, very religious. Okay, interesting. So maybe if I would have gone to Egypt, the more religious side of the family would have pressured me a little bit or tried to convince me a little bit more. But it wasn't something that I had, like it was a choice I wanted to make for myself at the end of the day. Like, you know, so I had to look into religion. And at that age, maybe at 13, what? 14. Okay, 13, 14. So I was year eight, year nine. Um, so I was thinking about it from that age, from from about year eight. I remember year seven, I used to go to Egypt and ask people about religion. How about this? How about that? And I used to be exposed. Interesting. I was exposed to the contradiction, the supposed contradictions of the Quran, that whole narrative at the age of 11 or 12. I was exposed mm-hmm. to it fully. I, I knew exactly the, the anti-Islamic websites. I knew everything. I knew. Um, yeah, yeah, I knew all of that. I, I, I saw what was going on in the in the atmosphere and I wanted to see both sides of the argument. Mm. So obviously I would watch people like Ahmed did that at that time as well, Zaki and Nike, mm. who I went and saw recently as well, Not by sure. the way. How was that? It was very good. It's good to see someone that you've been watching for a long time. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. How is he as a person? He's quite similar to how he is on the camera, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Um, That's cool, man. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. I was, I was watching all of that and trying to make sense of everything. And it took me, I'm not going to lie, it took me some time to conclude that, yeah, this is, I'm sh- 100% sure. But I was going through the, the process when I was a teenager. So I, at that time, I wasn't really necessarily reciting Quran or trying to memorize it or even, I was praying. It wasn't fully like uh, consistent or anything like that, you know. And I had become religious probably around year ten or eleven. Um, yeah. But then obviously it wasn't just one thing, like which is about fifteen years old, so mm. fourteen, fifteen, around seventeen. It was quite like I had, so, I had a fixed per- religious personality. So when you were in college, you were religious. I had a fixed religious personality. People knew that I, I prayed, that yeah. I try and preach to them. I, you know, yeah, all yeah. of those things. But at the same time, I had been quite a like loud you know, f- funny, you know, person. Like I wasn't, a lot of religious people are, from my experience anyways of them, is they're quite introverted. Yeah, like yeah. Like what I saw from, you know, my- In terms of their characters, yeah. A lot, yeah, from what I saw in school yeah. is that they're quite introverted, you mm-hmm. know, they're not really, but for me, I was I was an extroverted religious person. Mm-hmm. And um, and I realized that that mix was actually quite helpful for, for propagation of Islam. Because obviously nice. confidence sells, you know. I mean, yeah. and I became a salesman, by the way. That's something else that we can talk about. Yeah. But certainly, like it was, it wasn't something that just happened overnight. Yeah. It was a process, and you know, I think Allah Subhanahu wa Taala obviously He guided me. Hmm. And you know, I always remember this hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he says, "May yurid Allah bihi khayran fi din." Yeah, Allah Akbar. Whoever Allah wants good for, He He gives him understanding of the religion. So the fact that I was searching. I think because of the, the 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 persistence of my search over a long sp- uh, space of time, Allah gifted me with guidance. Because I was asking, I was knocking at the door. I wasn't. It wasn't like a matter of um, you know uh, overnight. I just became convinced of Islam in a, in a full sense. I had yaqeen. No, I had to go through the whole process. Uh, I had to cr- critically look at everything, all the contentions, all the so-called logical problems, and so on. And then I came to a very solid conclusion. To the extent where now, like this is it, like you know, for me, obviously religion is something that we would die for. You, you know, I think, I think that 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 can be very, very, very powerful for a person's insight because I went through something similar where I started doubting. I started going through a lot of doubts, a lot of logical yeah. doubts. I had yeah. to sort a lot of logical doubts out in my yeah. head, yeah. and I realized I came to a stage where I was like, if you want to keep doing this logical battle, or not even logical battle. Like waswas battle, like yeah. even I'm not saying you had waswas, but I'm yeah, saying a lot of people even get this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no point because you know this is the truth at this point. But people that you have that affliction, though, yeah. it's not in their control. Uh, what I some realize it's not something yeah, that yeah. they can they just turn turn off. It's it's literally th- there's something that's stuck in their mind. Yeah. Someone's told them something about like oh this, the Quran's got this contradiction. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They don't have the knowledge to sort out that contradiction in their mind. I feel time. like sometimes you don't even need the knowledge to sort things like that out because when your faith mm. is so strong. Yeah, but you that, and you know your faith is not strong yet. Yeah, but yeah. when your faith is strong yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, for example, Islam is the absolute truth. N- nothing, anything. You know, you know how you start thinking. I don't know yeah. if you'd agree with this, but the way I started thinking is okay. I don't understand that. But maybe I'll understand it in a couple of years. Do you know what made me like assured that the uh, that Qur- that Islam is true? Basically, how? For me, what made me assured that Islam is true is um, basically the Quran. Hmm. So I, I started I started an in depth kind of um, study of the Quran in my own like self by as a teenager. Yeah, because I wanted to see certain things and I wanted to, I looked at everything like all the claims that would be made for and against from mathematical miracles to scientific miracles. Yeah. 
uh, supposed mathematics, supposed scientific, you know, there's lots of question marks everywhere, but <coughs> I looked at everything. I looked at the linguistic stuff. Now, the thing really that did it for me was the language. Like, I think that was the, mm. because after a while I realized that, do you know what? This book, it could not, it's not, it's not fathomable that this could have been from a human being. If someone had, I'm not saying, obviously, this is not hash alilai, that this is the, the case of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if oh, someone had yeah. absolutely like the worst record in morality, yeah, yeah, but presented that book, I'd accept them as a prophet. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. If I if I know what I know about this book, yeah, yeah. If they had the worst mo like the morality, like they, they were killer serial killers, they were this, they were that, they were you know let's, let's say raper, like you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, killing the children and whatever it may be, you know. But he presented. But he presented like that. that khalas, that's what I need. Just show me how a human being can do this. But basically, you know? when Sorry. you when you see that something is the absolute truth in that way, yep. that's that's gonna. Because because Islam is a way of life. Yeah. I mean, you know, even for any non-Muslims that may be listening, Islam is a way of life. The way it projects itself is as it is, that this is the truth. And Islam, from from the second page of the Quran, ذلك الكتاب ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين that this is that this Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, God Almighty, is talking about this book and saying that there's no doubt in this book. And shak, we know in Arabic, shak, there's an Arabic word, it's, it's doubt. Shak is like 50-50 doubt. Rabe is a little bit of doubt. Rabe in Arabic is a little bit of doubt. Allah is saying, God is saying, there's not even a little bit of doubt in this book. Not even a little bit. Forget shak, doubting, 50-50, I'm not sure. Forget all of that. There's not even a little bit of doubt. So when you read Quran like that, it does definitely inspire you. Talking of reading Quran though, spirituality, how... Has spirituality impacted you as an individual? Because I've seen, bro, and this is a criticism I have of you, yeah? And you can accept it. I'm sure you yeah. will, yeah? Because, mashallah. But for example, I've been on your YouTube channel. We've worked together for years as well. And I've been on YouTube channel. We've been on each other's YouTube channels. Once, I've been on yours now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you I'm have. on yours now. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I'm just joking. Um, but before, mm. I've noticed something. The way the da'wah is projected yeah. by a lot of it's people. ultra rationalist including yourself as well yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah is very lacking of public spirituality oh yeah that's exactly right yeah. but i know that you're a very spiritual person why I, is i wouldn't that? say that you know I, I wouldn't even say that i'm very spiritual i think that but that's why not, is that we lacking like that then no i think that's a projection of my personality that's what i think that is i think that um really yeah yeah i don't think i'm a very spiritual person i've got my daily routines okay in terms of spirituality and stuff like that and i've got the things that i do yeah <coughs> In terms of, because I believe in consistency, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in the best of amal, uh, the best of best of deeds uh, to Allah is adwamuhu wa inqal, the most consistent one, and even if it's more, yeah. yeah so, and as the Arabs say, khalilun da'im khairun min kathirun muqatta. It's a little bit and small, better than a lot and not consistent. Yeah. So consistency is key. So I'm, a, I'm a believer of that. I believe that you know whatever I do, I have to be. It has to be a lifestyle for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so things like, for example, Athkar of Sabah al Masa. Yeah. Yeah. That is uh, no, very important. Can you translate what that so is? So, Athkar of Sabah al Masa is the supplications of the morning and the evening. Yeah. If you go to the Fortress of the Muslim, I think it's page 91 or something like that, yeah? Mm. It'll be on the contents page. <coughs> it's, it's a range of different adaya, different supplications that someone can make. And to be honest with you, when I first started doing it, I felt I actually, it's kind of difficult to describe this and people might laugh at me or whatever, I don't care, yeah. But I felt like a. The sweetness in my physical heart, like you can feel something there, like you know what I'm trying mm -hmm, to say. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a sweet feeling, That's a amazing. sensation. You get it. But when you continue doing something, it's like the gym. When you continue going to the gym and you get used to the workout, you need to up the game a little bit more. Yeah. You need to do something else. You need to basically mix it up a little bit. So, so you, basically, in terms of spirituality, you need to keep it going. Yeah, you need to kind of up it up, uh, mm. just, just like anything else. If you if you do something for a while, you need to kind of maybe increase volume or increase quality. Yeah, yeah. Either one of the two or both. So, so, so again, like, so you you feel like the da'wa with yourself, and I don't mean to put you on the spot here, yeah, yeah, yeah. but with yourself, with many others in the da'wa scene as individuals, lack spirituality because those people themselves lack spirituality. Uh, I think no, I couldn't say about those, those people. I could just talk but about okay, myself. let's let's yeah. let's. So for me. Because um, it's true, bro. Yeah, because yeah. No, I for not, me, I've, I've met people yeah. that are much like, to be honest, that 
way more spiritual. Like I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a spiritual person. That's number one. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I met people that are spiritual. I know what they look like, what they do, how they interact, their movements. Mm -hmm. It's completely different to my movements. Uh, and the reason why is a lot of them. Number one is environment. Yeah. So I, f a lot of the people that I meet, like people from uh, different countries, Morocco, Egypt, whatever. Yeah. My grandma is the best example. She died recently. Yeah. So Allah Allah. Allah. She was the most spiritual person I've ever met in my life. Yeah, Amazing. she's yeah, she's the most spiritual person I've ever. There's no scholar I've met that's more spiritual than her, in my opinion. What, yeah. what, uh, what, what and what I've met the big things? ones, by the way. Just so anyone's uh, saying that he hasn't seen the scholars. Yeah, I've been there. I studied with the scholars in, in your uh, the ones you like as well. Uh, but let's say, but <laughs> for her, like the the, the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <coughs> my interaction with her was like she was very 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 spiritual. So yeah. Let me tell you what I observed from her. Please. So I, what I observed from her was that she basically she was um, at that time she was like seven, she died at seventy seven years old she died like this year yeah um, and um, and and she her daily routine basically she had le leukemia yeah she had leukemia mm -hmm. a type of cancer yeah mm -hmm. and um, and her daily she would fast on Ramadan even though the doctors all of them like kind of like told her not to do it her family told her but she wanted to do it because mm -hmm. she felt like she was gonna die and she wanted to die doing good deeds good deeds yeah and. Um, her daily routine, because when I went, to, like I went to Egypt three years ago, and I'm, you know, obviously saw her, you know, interacted with her and so on. Yeah, you know, I'm going to the toilet or whatever, and I see her like praying, Qiyamul Layl. She's playing, praying Qiyamul Layl. No way. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, standing up as well. No and way. And she's she can't even stand up properly. Like you know, it's, she's praying every day. It's very consistent. Fajr, she's there before Fajr wakes up every day. The same noise as the toilet. You know, she go in there, do wudu or whatever. You get it and. Uh, throughout the day she's reading Quran she's reading the Quran like she's reading it and 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 that's all that she's doing you know and obviously Athkar you know what I'm trying to say and, and, and the way she just moves her movements is the movement of a spiritual person when she does Tasbih each um, each time she does a glorification of Allah she takes her time like with me when I do it now I'm subhanAllah subhanAllah trying to get it quickly done so I can go yeah. and do my thing with my grandma you can see that she was like engaging like with every second of that particular tasbih. Amazing, man. So that, and by the way, a lot of things happen to her and stuff like that, which wouldn't happen to regular people. Like mm. you, you see that they, they have insight and they're speaking in ways as, as, as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them, you know, gives them dreams, certain things are going to happen in the future, this and that, Ajib. you know, and they see the prophets in a, a prophet in a dream and this, Lots of things that just don't happen to us, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I've seen the movements of uh, spiritual people, and I'm certainly not one of them. Like so, but yeah, so I think it's because of the debates. I, it is the reason. Look, look, I want to come to that as well, bro. Because look, there's there's some things with the dawah, and you know about these things as well. Yeah. That I just the way some aspects that the dawah has become like I just don't agree with. You yeah. know, this is one of them, and yeah. I, and I've noticed it in many of us. I'm not pointing you out. Yeah. This is something I, I've noticed in myself. Go online, go on my channel, go on my Instagram. You know, we're not trying to put, but it's like, how much do us as Dawah figures talk about spirituality? Yeah. You know, you can go on our YouTube channel, they can go on your YouTube channel, yeah. and there's not one video, maybe yeah. there's like not one video yeah. saying, guys, do your um, morning and evening remembrances. Yeah. Guys, do you read Quran? Yeah. More like it's, you know, debating and stuff like that and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And I think you as well, it's, yeah. it's very good to speak to you about this because I know for a fact you. Yeah. Know the power of spirituality Because how did you prepare For your debate with David Wood uh, Take notes This and that what? Spiritually though What made that Yeah I made a lot of that yeah, So that's that's, that. that's a spiritual aspect of it yeah. Now You wouldn't be doing that If you don't If you didn't believe it mm. So many of us we, we haven't truly tasted That sweetness of spirituality Once you taste it because Spirituality is what many of us lack and once you feel that spirituality, that sweetness, that thing that you said you felt in your heart, mm. and this is how it is. This mm. is the importance of spirituality. Mm. Many of us don't focus on it. What solutions do you feel like spirituality will bring to people if they tried it at home? Um, from what I see of people of spirituality, uh, obviously they have tamatnina, which is the idea of that. Uh, with the, with the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest and you know I think that people confuse sometimes happiness and tranquility and I think tranquility is a more it should be more of a sort of a psychological state to be honest because what is happiness it's kind of like a spike in your 
um, in your state of being. You, you go from A to or one zero to a hundred or whatever or zero to eighty. You go up. There's a spike in the reaction. Your know, reaction to stimuli in the world. Yeah. But tranquility is a bit more like you feel relaxed. Mm. You know, it's more you're floating rather than you're swimming or you, yes. it, you you are, you are um, so gliding. Mm. Your glide. Your emotions are gliding. Do you get it? So I feel like that when the Quran says Tamanina, you know, and on the other hand, uh, oh, uh, it's the, the verse says. With the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest? And on the other hand, in Surah Al uh, uh, Surah Taha, it says, "You know, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَامَ." You know, we, and whoever goes against our, uh, you know, my dhikr, my uh, remembrance, then he, you know, he's going to have a very depressed life. And and what was the next ayah that you were saying? وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَامَ. And he'll be he'll be gathered on the day of judgment blind. And what will he say to him? He said, He was said to him, Why have you put me, uh, made me blind, and I used to be seeing? Say that day you were, you were given our ayahs, our, our, signs. Uh, our signs, and then you. Forgot it, so that day you'll be forgotten. So, so today you, so that day, so you're gonna be forgotten. Yeah. So it's like, look at look at the people who, who who are like that, and 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 that's why I feel like spirituality is something so so important. Even all of us at Aira. Do you know what? Something, something interesting. Sorry, I forgot to mention there. Yeah, this is a mulah yeah. that is. I I I discovered this by the way. Yep. Yeah? Okay. Myself. What is this? You seem very yes, excited. Yes, I want to. I want to put this. Going to be for the dawah of carriers. Is all you can use this. That's your camera. If you want to talk. Oh, sorry. To it. Yeah. All right with it. Yeah. yeah. I, and you know, I subhanallah on this on this point. Just yeah. Talking to the I was reading the Quran one time, and I it's Surah Al-Mujadila. It's also Mujadila. Yeah. Um, chapter fifty-eight of the Quran. Okay. And I was reading it, reading it, reading. It. And there was one verse that came up, um, which is Astahwaz alayhim shaitan fa ansahum dhikr Allah. That the shaitan overcame them so that he made them forget about the remembrance of Allah. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought this is really interesting uh, surah, yeah. And this is part of like that linguistic miracle of the Quran, yeah. Um, this is me. I didn't consult any secondary. Po- I was just a guy that was reading the Quran, and I realized something about the surah, yeah. Mm. I don't know how many verses there are in Surah Al Mujadila, yeah, mm. but every single ayah has the word Allah in it. Amazing. Do you know that? I and I, I challenge you I, I, Go and, uh, and find the, the surah yeah? Every single ayah yeah, Has the word Allah Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah alam why But you know Allah says in the same surah Istahwadha alayhim shaitan Fa insahum dhikr Allah The shaitan overcame them And he made them forget The remembrance of Allah So it's as if Allah Is trying to remind us now Yeah that and, the next, and the next surah Which is surah al-hashr yeah. Which is in the, in the Quran yeah, um, Chronologically The next surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He, he says Um he 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 says, uh, uh, you know, he he mentions that th- those people who forgot Allah, so he made them forget themselves. Mm. Yeah, they are mm. the ones who were the evil doers. So everything is connected. But if you forget about Allah, then number one, you're gonna forget about yourself. You will not have like, it's like how can you forget about the one that created you and still think? That you have an existential purpose in this life. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. You you're purposeless. You're floating container. You you're nothing basically without purpose of life. That that's really important for for me. I would hate to, like being an atheist. I mean, imagine that. That's disgusting. Audubillah. For me, like for, uh, personally, I would f- hate mm. to be like that. Like forget my parents, for example. Imagine I don't know that I had parents. I don't I don't I don't get it. That I, I had parents. I came here through the medium of parents. That would be an embarrassing. Uh, Spiritual state Yeah 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 So it, there's so many things bro We can talk about To highlight the importance Of spirituality There are so many yeah. things We can speak about You know for example Everyone knows The four Khulafa al-Rashidin right We have the four Great caliphs of Islam right. Umar Ali radiallahu anhu Abu Bakr Uthman radiallahu anhu Ajma'een All of them yeah. May Allah be pleased Even with the them order was a bit Yeah, up, yeah. Let's. I wasn't doing it in order. Yeah. I was just do. I was just saying yeah, the yeah. names. Yeah. So th- we have these four caliphs. Yeah. Yeah. You know that many people they talk about all of the great things they all done. 
Yes. Umar radiallahu anhu was like this. Abu Bakr used to do- donate so much in charity. Ali radiallahu anhu was like this. He was brave. He was like this. Yeah. Uthman radiallahu anhu was very generous. He married mm-hmm. two of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Two of the daughters. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Afwan. Two of the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we can go on and on and on and. On. But how many people mentioned the fact that they were all hafad of Quran? They had all memorized the Quran. We forget about the spiritual aspects, and it's important, man. It's very, very important. Moving on yes. now, you yes. sp- you mentioned debates earlier, okay? Yes. So I want to ask you, my pers- do you see me at Speaker's Corner? Well, I've seen you once or twice, I think. Okay, so I don't really go Speaker's Corner, right? Yeah, you don't. I f- personally feel like, and many of us here at Ayer also share these sentiments, that Speaker's Corner is controversial. Yeah. It can be damaging for the dawah at times. Yes. Um, it's very argumentative. Yeah. Arguments take place there. Yes. Um, people, you go there. People are swearing at each other. People are just treating each other like nothing. It's not a civilized academic discussion a lot yes. of the time. Yes. And there's not much actual real dawah happening in yeah. speaker's corner. Yeah. How do you feel about those sentiments? I think you're absolutely right about all of those points. But the the, the issue is as so well. So why do you go to speaker's corner then? I go speak school because the maslaha and because it's a good platform. I've 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 been to many universities across different parts of this country, yeah, in UK, yeah. been to the US and been to many different other countries as well, yeah. One thing that I would say is actually a more powerful platform than all of those places almost without exception unless you're deba- you're debating or you're um, yeah. engaging with a very high profile person with yeah. a social media following is speaker's corner. Okay. So are you so it's, it's, are you saying that in terms of viewership? Yes. Okay. So so let me let me let me um, let me challenge you on that contention. And, and one more thing as well, which is important. Okay. Um, I think that lecture, like pedagog- pedagogically, yeah, or pedagogically, okay. pedagogically, yeah. Um, there's been a lot of research into lecture style um, presentations. Okay. Yeah. So. Pedagogy is basically the study of how one learns and teaches, one learns learns and teaches. Teaching, okay. teaching methods and so on. Yeah. So in 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 the field of pedagogy, there's been discussion and you know now I think at this point you're saying the word wrong yourself. Pedagogy. <laughs> no, it's I'm pedagogy. Joking. It's pedagogy. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so there's the lecture style approach, yeah. um, especially obviously language acquisition. There's no question. Yeah. Okay. That you can't apply. You you can't have that approach. You can't. Uh, you can't have that approach but even in general learning yeah um a lot of pedagogical studies have shown that uh lecture style information is yeah. uh, is it, or, uh, presentations are not great so we've tried to, i've tried to break it down okay. to 20 minute lectures nowadays i've tried to really that's like, good i agree with minutes. that now, if it has to be done over 45 minutes i will do it but basically engagement is what people it's are key. after now it's i agree and with speakers that. corner provides that speakers corner so a lot of people want to see that engagement they want to see that interaction yeah. between people so let me let me come in here now yeah Speaker's it's Corner. It's like reality TV as well. The storylines that or whatever. Was, that's exactly my point. Yeah. So Speaker's Corner does provide engagement, as does reality TV, where you have yeah. so and so shouting at so and so, so and so punching so and so, etc. And I personally believe yeah. that is why Speaker's Corner is watched so widely. Yeah. It's not the education value. Of course it's not. It's not yeah. the debate value. Yes. It's not the da'wah value. Yes. It's not that you're learning. That's something. all tech is, yeah, exactly. It's just it's just that you're you watch you're eating popcorn and you're watching so and so have a dig at so and so and then you're going oh guys did you see that yeah. oh, how many job just whooped this guy or or or, 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 or the opposite and or it like becomes egotistical it can become yeah yeah and it becomes egotistical yeah. it, it's not even can it becomes egotistical a lot yeah. of the time yeah so agreed w- with yourself don't you feel like that can be a detrimental image to that one because a lot of the time mm. and you ha- i feel like you should clarify this because yeah, go on. As someone that goes there, a lot of the time people think debate equals dawah. There's an ayah in Surah Al Nahl, and Razi Fakhruddin Razi he comments on the ayah. Which one? He's talking about Allah and Sabir Rabbika bil Hakim jalal Mawlid al Hasan. We jadilum bil Latihi Asan. And then where where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaks about debate. Here, jadilum bil Latihi Asan. Okay. Or debate with them with that which is better. And the wow, the wow is mentioned. Right? Jadilum wow. Yeah. yeah. So in Arabic, yeah. in Arabic, you'll agree with this as well. Go on. Sometimes the wow can be mentioned to. In fact, it is mentioned. What we learn in Arabic is when a wow is in place, the oh, letter so wow, it's, it's, not, it's um, a separate thing now. Yeah, it's a separate sentence. The only issue is that you have other uh, ayahs as well in the Quran. Yeah, you do have other ayahs. But when we speak about this one, yeah. I want to focus on the commentary of Razi, where he yeah. actually mentions how mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. differentiates between debate and da'wah. 
Uh, that's a, I would I would disagree with that. You Basically, would disagree with that. Yeah, because if you look at the whole Quran, there's, so you, there's three you, main you, verses that I would bring up. There's one in Nahl, yeah. So yeah. So Wajadilhum is it part of the da'wah or is it new? Is it a new sentence? That's the question. Is well, it well, so, is, so is it well atf or is it well istinaf? That's the question. Yeah? Okay. So if it's well istinaf, it's a new, it's a new. Uh, you should translate it. For sorry, people. well atf is a conjunctive. Uh, it's like and, yeah. So it puts yeah, two things together. Yeah. Well istinaf is basically when you start a sentence, you use the word well. Separation. Yeah. Now, if Fakhruddin al-Razi believed that this was uh, separation, a separation, that's one scholarly view. Uh, okay. But you've got two other areas to contend with. Okay. One of them. Uh, is in Surah uh, Al Ankabut, yeah. where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wala tujadil ahl kitab illa billati hi ahsan." Okay. So do not do debate with ahl kitab except for that which is better, and the same wording is used by the way. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Bil hikmati wal maazat al ahsan, hasana, hasana, ahsan, hasana, ahsan." Same kind of wording is used, so that makes it clear that actually there is a connection between the two things you've done. And the third one is in Surah Al An'am as well, yeah. where, where uh, obviously this one's a very famous example, where Ibrahim is having a, a, his debating, his uh, he's basically debating. Is his, jidal always a positive term in the Quran? It's neutral, I would say. It's negative at times. Yeah, it's neutral, when so it can Allah be used negatively and positively. When Allah speaks about Hajj in the Quran, wala jidala, wa, uh, wala rafatha, wala fusuka, wala jidala fil Hajj. Yeah, fil Hajj. Yeah, but wh- so why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you not to do it in Hajj if it's a positive thing? Because Muslims are Muslims. All, uh, all Muslims in Hajj. But in Speaker's Corner, you're debating with Muslims sometimes. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That, that, that point, thank that, you. That, I win. that point, this that point, I would agree with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, so, if you say with the Muslims, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. But even that, to be honest, but point I, being I know we has, has a discussion on. Yeah, uh, but I don't want to sound like, you know, I'm um, um, preaching a certain, you yeah. know, thing. Yeah. But. <laughs> Imam Ahmad had yeah. a book called Usul Sunnah. Okay. Uh, Usul Sunnah, Indana, whatever, and he, he the, the, the principles of the Sunnah upon us and whatever. And he says, don't, um, don't debate with certain sects like deviated sects in Islam. But we don't want to get too deep into yeah. into that sort of conversation, yeah, because that. But then Anawi says, Anawi yeah. says that sometimes within Islam there's yeah. there's maslaha. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. basically, he's maslaha, maslaha meaning that, com- yeah. co- common um, where where it's beneficial that you can do it when you yeah. not that you don't. And it's got to be qualified people for certain specialist specialist things. But let's so. keep it basic level because right. a lot of the people that are going to be watching are going to be at very right. basic level. Yeah, so no, I know. No, you I know, don't try and de- demean the audience, brother. <laughs> no, <laughs> just, just because now. Uh, don't try and going, bring. <laughs> you're trying to bring the audience up to your level, Subhanallah. But yeah. Yeah, look, regardless. Um, I don't think. I, I I'm sure we can agree. Channel. I'm sure yeah. we can agree that speakers corner. But sorry, the well, last last thing is uh, Surah uh, Al Anam. Yeah. Where well, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala narrates the, the situation of um, Ibrahim. Yeah. وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمَهُ وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمَهُ his, his people debated with him okay. After what? After he says uh, No, but they were doing the debating No, he was debating حَاجَّهُ It has to be two people Because okay. it, he, was, he was debating with them He first was talking about هَذَا رَبِّي, هذا ربي. He says, this is my Lord yeah. Talking about the moon And then but, he says هَذَا رَبِّي هذا But wasn't Ibrahim alayhi salam giving da'wah to them And they were debating back Yeah, so if you get so he, he, he but, he was, but the difference is, Akhi And, and, and I, I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll actually mention this no. Ibrahim alayhi salam was calling to something. Yeah, a tahid. lot of the times, yeah. these conversations speakers corner. If you watch them with right. this in mind, with yeah. what I'm about yeah. to say, they're not calling to anything. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, no, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm right. You're wrong. Yeah, if but it becomes personal, to? It's, it's true. But if, if, it's, if, if it's religion related, if it's Dao related, especially Tawhid, now I think there's a lot of lot definitely. Of uh, yeah, you can be calling as well. So there's yeah. that fair aspect. Generally speaking, though, I'm sure you'll agree that sometimes it's better to keep it clean. Sometimes it's better mm. to keep it clean because some of the things can create controversy and stuff like that and whatnot. Mm. And you've been involved in some of these con- yeah. controversies. Oh, you, you know, know? You know you get really <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, 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 honestly, you've been involved in some yeah. of these controversies. And I personally believe it can be something so, negative. So was Ibrahim. Sorry. So well, Ibrahim was So you're involved. comparing yourself to Ibrahim uh, Yeah, well, comparisons are everywhere. But, uh, the prophets, all of them are controversial figures. Uh, I don't know if you can say that. Yeah, because the, the uh, yeah, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? The Quran is controversial. The Quran is controversial because con- controversy is where no, the disagreement. Who, no, but who is the Quran controversial to? Exactly, that's the same thing. We could, we could make an argument. No, but speakers controver- uh, speakers corner becomes controversial to everyone. No, but it's there's not arguments that. taking place everywhere. There's people kicking each Muslims other. Muslims always people it, chasing each it, other. This is the way I put it. Uh, I put it is that yeah. you're going to be controversial either way. Yeah, you're either make an argument, yeah. or the argument will be made against you. As simple as that. That's how it is in this country. Uh, no, there, but there, is, there is a space for it. I, I, you know, but don't you believe there's a different differentiation between an yeah. argument and yeah. calling? 
no. I don't, I don't believe that, that you can always differentiate. Sometimes you can call through arguments. No, you can. There, there are times. Uh, for example, argument. for example, yeah. you're speaking to an atheist, you're yeah. speaking to a Christian, and you're calling them, you're educating them about Islam. That doesn't necessarily need to turn into a debate. Uh, to a debate. But that, if it does, but if it does, then what you're doing is you're still calling them, yes. but you're. But you're putting their points to yeah, the yeah. side. No, I agree with this. You see, method, yeah. so the calling method is always there. The that yeah. is always there. Yeah, yeah. My point, I don't disagree, but bro, yeah. by the way, yeah. debates are good. Yeah, yeah, I might yeah. even debate in the future. Debates Inshallah. are good. Inshallah, yeah? Yeah. Inshallah, debates are good. And many of our elders and many of the people we look up to yeah. debated. Yeah. You know, people like who you mentioned, Sheikh Ahmed Didat, Sheikh Zakir Naik, yeah. you know, may Allah bless them. They your debated. Dad, yeah, my great, father. Great, great debater. Yourself. And mashallah, he's, 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 he, by the way, I've, I've just uploaded a video of his uh, on YouTube. Okay. On my channel is excellent yeah. or like exposition. This is actually yeah, yeah. one of the main counter theses to what you just said because yeah. it was an incredibly academic exposition where he was mentioning no. references. Did you watch the video? Let me, but let me With clarify. That guy Joseph, did you watch it? No, no, no. But let me clarify. You should something. watch the video, man. It's, let, it's let, absolutely excellent. Let me clarify something. This is a clarification. I'm not saying that yeah. Speaker's Corner is full of negativity and it's all bad, etc. Yeah. You're gonna have good things coming out there, definitely. But that's like that's like a lot of things. You but you are gonna have benefits but a lot of coming us built out there. Our, like, like dawah f- from Speaker's Corner. So for example, I understand Abdul that. Hamza Zorsis. I understand that. Uh, a lot but of it, the Arab brothers. But, but now, now it's like a reality. A lot show. of us actually, if it wasn't for Speaker, we have to be honest. If it wasn't mm-hmm. for Speaker's Corner, the platform might not have been there. No, but now, now I'm talking about now. Then I used to go. Then yeah. I used to go, and I used to even debate with yeah. people. But then, so, so the idea is, it was not like a reality show. If it's something that works and and it can yeah. actually attract people's attention and can bring people to Islam, and it's good that everything, um, almost everything that you do, that's going to be good, is going to have some effect. But I think this is good. Well. I think this conversation is good because yeah. it's going to make it clear to people that guys sometimes also take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's important coming from you. Yeah. You know, it's important coming from because yeah, yeah. you're one of the most viewed people in Speaker's Corner. Regardless, I'm not trying to throw you under bu- under the bus and say, "Oh, you're doing nonsense." No, yeah, yeah because debating yeah. the scholars of the past debated. We yeah. believe that as Muslims. Regardless, what advice would you give to people who watch Speaker's Corner videos yeah. and people who go to it? Uh, I, you know, watch Speaker's Corner videos. I mean, to be honest with you, like for those who like watch, enjoying watching it. I would say to them, you know, it's it is what it is. I mean, if if you find that there's benefit that you get getting out of it, if it's a way that you're learning. By the way, um, a lot of the times we plan lessons, in speakers corner. We plan lessons in speakers corner. So I think to myself, okay, I'm, I want to do. Uh, I want I want to teach people about these arguments. Yeah. Now it, it could be very easy that I bring a, a blackboard or whiteboard behind me and start showing the people, but. It's much easier to engage someone in the. But other. then again, Akhi, yeah. so I would say that if you, if you're getting if you're getting educational value from it, that's very good. But there's going to come a time where obviously, if you want to I- I develop in your knowledge, that you're going to have to move away from that, and you're going to have to do your own research. But don't you believe? Do your, yeah, I'm I'm really sorry to come in. Yeah. But don't you believe that that educational value you're giving it the way you're giving it to them is in the form of a debate? And sometimes an argument. Yeah. Don't you believe that that's going to now encourage people to approach people in that way, but they're in the workplace, and that that yeah. that, yeah, that yeah, should yeah. that's not suitable. Yeah, in the workplace. it's not suitable in the workplace. Like yeah. for example, the person. Uh, so, uh, Muhammad, yeah, that's a good point. Muhammad might start talking to Katie at work, yeah. and Katie is like really receptive, but because of what he's watched on Speaker's Corner, he's like no no no, 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 no. And, <laughs> and all of a sudden yes 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 he's yeah, created yeah, an approach and Katie's yeah. like whoa okay like yeah 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 yeah. All right, mate. You know, yeah, you're on yeah. your high horse a bit. Yeah, so there yeah. is that as well. Yeah. But definitely, yeah. in terms of advice, um, no, I, I would, I'll yeah. let you continue. That's that's a good that. point. So I think what you just said is very valid. So I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't use those methods uh, with people that are late from the laity or whatever. Like mm-hmm. you know, start nice and just you know try your best to win them over as individuals. I think learning the arguments is a good thing. Yeah. But it, the way in which you project your arguments is very important to to bear in mind that different yeah. environments call yeah, for different yeah, approaches. I agree. One last topic I want to speak about with you. Yeah. Is se- separate now, yeah. Okay. So you can calm down. I'm all right. <laughs> <My> <laughs> yes. I'm used no, to no, it. I, you know, one week, uh, we can we, we can week out. This was quite uh, nice and uh, now we we really gentle. love we really love you at uh, Aira. So that's love one of the reasons why we wanted to get you on the show as well. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, you don't really talk about it online that much, but you're someone that um, has been. I'm, I'm not. I'm not anything, man. Uh, trust me. I'm. I'm no, this but is what I'll say that you've been doing it for some time, right? 
No, not really. Like, I, what I do you mean? Start, You've I, been doing it for a few years, man. Yeah, two, three years. But yeah. I, um, before that, I was more into uh, freestyle wrestling, you know. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, it, it's all levels. Like, to be honest, if I compare myself with someone who's a full-time professional fighter, then then they're going to be, Obviously, especially if they're the same way. So I'm not... I'm how, often, how often do you do it? I do it on the side. Like, to be honest with you, like, I try and do... I've got a schedule, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like I said, everything that's good... Try and keep things into um, a schedule, f things consistently. So if I can get two, two, two times a week of grappling, at one time, that would be optimum. If I can have one time, one time of striking a week, two grappling. Mm -hmm. And if I need to work on the striking, I fl I'll mix it up. I'll do two striking and one grapple, whatever. But so long as I'm doing two or three times a week, obviously sometimes I... Um, I'm, I'm I'm tired, ill, mm -hmm. or traveling, or Have you, you know, I've, I've traveled a lot this year, so it's been difficult to keep that consistency. What's your favorite thing about that choice of martial art, BJJ? Because my favorite martial art, personally, um, is Muay Thai. Yeah, no, my I wouldn't say that BJJ is my my favorite in that sense. I would say that I I enjoy stand up freestyle wrestling. Yeah, that's why. I, I, oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, I so jiu jitsu that. more. I, I started off by the way when I was a teenager. I was I was an ABA boxer. Okay Yeah So nice. uh, You know I was a heavyweight The heavyweight categories Were 91 kilos And over at that time It's ABA it's yeah. uh, Amateur Boxing Association mm -hmm. Now they've changed the rules mm -hmm. But obviously now Do you know why I actually stopped Because of the hadith There's a hadith I started to get religious إِذَا قَاتَلَ أَحَدَكُمْ أَخَاهُ فَلْيَرْتَقِي الْوَجْهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ خَلَقَ أَدَمْ عَلَى صُورَتِهِ Bukhari and Muslim uh, Hadith of Abu Huraira Where it says that You know If they hit in the face And so on So I thought uh, And also And this is kind of related. I don't like the fact that actually you can get really hurt and in the way that you get hurt is that it affects your brain. I don't like that because if I'm studying, because a lot of my objectives in life was to l learn, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I know it sounds a bit like whatever, but I, my objective in life was to, like to learn. No, learn that's, that's what, a big part of what you do, yeah. And to be honest with you, um, a lot of the research has shown that if you do heavy, especially heavy sparring, because we used to spar every single week, once or twice, yeah? Uh, and it used to be quite heavy and uh, as teenagers we, you know it's difficult to mm. have that maturity to go 70% or whatever teenagers you just go for it you know what I'm trying to say and um, so w w I, I believe that that had an impact on me and um, I didn't like it I don't like the fact that someone could, especially as a heavyweight could just give me one punch one day I could be caught with one smack and that smack could actually have an impact on something I've yeah, learned. Yeah, it, it could damage you for life. It can smack. It can actually have an impact on learning. But for for, for example, with wrestling, if I get what's the kind of injuries that you get with wrestling, it's less impactful. Yeah, is it's not less impactful. You you get joint injuries. You get like your um, knee injuries. You get neck Back, injuries, yeah. which are problematic. I'm mm -hmm. not saying anything, but it's not your brain. You get it. It's not. It's not going to affect your cognitive functionality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for that reason, I kind of moved. Hovered for those two reasons, Islamic. Yeah. I swear that the, the main reason was Islamic, because otherwise I would have nice. been, I would have, I would have really enjoyed to do uh, more and more of uh, of the ABA stuff. Yeah. Um. So I moved on to like, uh, what do you call it? Um, BJJ. No, I moved on to wrestling for for wrestling. some time. Mm -hmm. Some Iranians actually, you know, and um, and after that I, I done BJJ. So it was kind of like nice. You know, all three of the things that you need to do. And then after that, I started experimenting with a bit of kickboxing and Muay Thai as well. But not, I'm not anything in that. So. Nice. I know why you say that as well, because you've spoken about it. <laughs> you've spoken to me about him. Have I? It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if I've told you this before. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I know. I know. But the thing is, yeah, if, if I had to choose, yeah, excellent question. Yeah, if I had to choose a martial art for the Muslim community to learn, yeah, it would be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Really? It, yeah, yeah. It but but it's, it's ground and pound. Oh no, no! The reason why I would choose it over and above like striking is number one for the reason I just mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the two reasons I mentioned. Number one, number two. Oh, you mean as in something to do like to practice? Yeah, I wouldn't want my son. Mm. Yeah, to like I would not bring him into boxing. If he said I want to box, I'd, I'd try my best to dissuade him from it. If he like as a professional or something. Not, I'm not talking about sparring, light sparring. No, but sometimes you can or do training. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. not talking about that. I'm, I'm saying that this guy, if my son said, you know, let me go in and be, you know, a, you know, a professional. Uh, or even an amateur but because in amateur you can get hurt it's, now it's it's yeah. 12 ounce gloves yeah before it used to be sorry it's 10 ounce gloves I think it, before it used to be 12 and they, they've taken the head uh, covering off before they used to have the head in our days you had to, used to have head covering now mm -hmm. you, do, you don't have the head, head you covering don't need to, yeah, yeah. and so it's problematic like you know especially mm -hmm. if you're if you're studying like I said and stuff like that and you break your nose quite uh, often as well have you, know, you broken your nose I don't know if I broke I don't think I broke it but I, but it like bled and stuff like that you mm -hmm. get it in sparring and whatever mm -hmm. and, 
I think sparring is a very good feeling though. And the uh, face, like you know, you don't want your face to look ugly as well, because you you can get you you end up. I swear, this is it sounds a bit thing, but yeah. when you're thing, you're you're getting cuts in the eye. You you know you're getting it's it's yeah, a bit yeah, it's different. Whereas wrestling, and BJJ and all that stuff, your mm-hmm. your cuts are hidden, kind of thing. Yeah, your yeah, bruises yeah. are hidden. Yeah. So and BJJ, I there's no way in hell you can put a lightweight with a heavyweight in in in, in boxing or in uh, Muay Thai. No, no, he'll get murdered. Yeah, yeah, unless I mean, <laughs> have you seen the fight? There's a fight basically between Shaquille O'Neal. Okay. And Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. Now, for those who don't know, Oscar De La Hoya is one of the best fighters of all time, top fifty. Yeah, one of the best boxers of all time. Yeah, yeah. Top. I would say top fifty, maybe top. You can even make an argument top thirty. Shaquille O'Neal was a tall basketball player, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> seven foot. Well, I don't know what basketball player. And they did like a charity boxing match. Yeah, and it was very even. Yeah. I mean, why was it so even? Because of this guy's reach advantage and his height advantage and his weight advantage. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. He didn't know know how to box. They they put him into a, a rigorous training camp. And after about three or four weeks, he, he boxed him, or maybe five or six weeks. But how can someone who's one of the best fighters of all time even compete with someone? So the weight differential there, it destroys it. Had it been the case with BJJ like that, yeah, where you got someone like he's been doing BJJ for 20, 30 years, hmm. yeah, and you have someone who's a like much- a Big guy. In- big guy. That guy will be destroyed. Yeah, yeah. He'll, be, he'll be lucky to be survive for two or three minutes. Very lucky. Yeah, Two, yeah, three yeah. minutes, he's very lucky. Now, it is a powerful sport. Like so, that, so yeah. with BJJ, that's why you have open categories. Yeah, you, yeah. Um, they have open, you can, you, can, you can fight someone who's 75 kilos if you're 120. Yeah. That, that's possible. They have yeah. those, those open categories. Yeah. Boxing, you will never have those open categories. Yeah, you won't have that, yeah. And wrestling, you will never have those open categories. You will never. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's too much. The, 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 the size matters, basically, in those sports more. So I think for a woman, for example, or someone who's of average or small size, Doing BJJ will put you, like, will allow you to compete with bigger opponents mm-hmm. in a much more effective way. Generally speaking, obviously, yeah, it's not um one size fits all ever. That's no, I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you, bro. Jazakallah khair for coming on the podcast, man. Exactly. It's well, been. By the way, you didn't tell the people what, what I'm doing nowadays. It's been really, really good. What? What's what this? What, tell the people. K by H, you're selling comms now. Yeah, I mean, it's good that you brought it up. <laughs> 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 So I mean, what, what what's happening is that listen, what, we'll tell the people to follow you on Instagram, and then they 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 can you can tell them on it's Instagram. It's not on Instagram. It's on my it's on my um what do you call it? Uh, I've made a new website okay. www.muhammadhijab.co.uk. Mashallah. And there's a shop section there. Basically, I'm okay. selling comes. It's very nice. I'm sure you would need one actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How does it feel on your body? Feels alright, man. My body. I mean, I'm your, using it on my bed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where, <laughs> but where you want me? It's to got use? two sides. It's got like for the rough. You know, if you've got me, I've got like kind of coarse um, beard. Hmm. You, 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 you take. Look, before we finish, I know. Sorry, I'm, you, you take care of yourself, don't you? Can, can I ask you advice before we end? Sorry, I know. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry yeah, to yeah, say because this is actually. I'll be honest. I with do. You. I try to. Yeah, because this is actually. I want advice from you. Yeah. Okay. So, because I think that you do. You know, you've got that metro look. You've got that. You know, you you've got that you know, taking care of yourself. You know, you, you honestly. I mean. Yeah. Do you have a routine like? That you um, mm. that you want to seriously? Do you have a do you have a routine? Me, I'm I'm a bit like slapdash in it. Like to be honest, yeah. Only recently I realized that. You know, I'll tell you what happened. Okay, from Yanni. For me, I, I went into a couple of public debates, and one of the main things that people were talking to me about and complaining about. And yeah. if you, you look at the, look at the comments, is you're not wearing your suit properly. No, nah, not even that. That, okay. that that's you weren't wearing your suit properly, was it? by the way. Yeah. Uh, next time, let me help you. Okay, it's not even that. You can help me. For, uh, there is yeah. a next time, so you can help me yeah. um, go to California uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, to I'll do a debate. So what I was going to say was, um, there was a debate I did uh, w- with a particular group of people, yeah? All right. And I came with a t-shirt. Yeah, a pink one. No, 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 it was just a blue t-shirt. Yeah, you've and worn pink vests before. I don't yeah. know where is okay. that, Isn't that part of your metro thing? Uh, never. You'd I never thought that was out pink. Even, even if I'm in pink. Miami, I'm not wearing a pink vest, bro. <laughs> is it, is you were dressed like you're in Mia- no, Miami. No, but if you were pink, London. no one would say anything to you. No, that's you. That's your pink is you. Do you get it? Yeah, recently it hasn't been. But really? yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you can get away with it. If I can get away with it, you can yeah, definitely yeah, get away with it. Yeah, I could get away with it, yeah. Now, what I was going to say yeah, was that oh, yeah, when I went to this debate, I was wearing a t-shirt, yeah? All right. And the guy had, you know, this debate, he's a particular like, you know, like student of knowledge kind of individual yeah all right so he had piles of books and whatever and that okay and he came with his whole like garb and this and that and his students were there oh i know what you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah 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 so i came in yeah with a t-shirt and my and because i was all russian or like yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of those deba- i did not prepare for that debate 
I can tell you, I had two days preparation for that debate. Yeah, yeah. He was preparing for four weeks and he told me, look, here's where I'm going to do it. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. I said, do it, yeah? Run it out. It's two days, give me two days, I'll, I'll do yeah, it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? So that day I was doing, I was uh, doing some other things. No, I wasn't even researching. I was doing some other things in, in life. I was driving yeah. to the place, yeah. going with the Sheikh through, uh, Sheikh Muhammad, yeah, he was with me, going through some arguments, going through some verses. Yeah. Yeah, just make sure that I've got them, you know, yeah. and whatever. So I was there and obviously like my face, my, my beard, it wasn't combed or anything. Yeah. And I, and I was just like roughed up. Hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? So people criticize you for so that. So I would look at the comments after the bait. Yeah. And and there was like this guy's got he didn't even brush his he didn't even brush his beard. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is how the guys walked this, out of bed. <laughs> this is this is how they validate their religion. This is how they validate their sect, yeah. No, the, but it's important. You get what I'm saying? So can you give us yeah, yeah, some yeah. tips? Honestly, yeah, yeah, life is important. Can you give us tips on what you do or what yeah. you should do? Yeah. Male grooming. And uh, where, where where brushing your beard, you know, fits within that context, please. Do, okay. you, brush your, do you brush your beard? I do, I, I do, yeah, I do. How often? I do every day. Uh, every day I try to brush my beard. Can I, I ask how do you brush? Okay, so obviously it depends how your beard is. Yeah. Right. So my beard is quite similar to yours. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So basically, um, I I brush my beard out with with a comb. Now I only I only. I, I, yeah, with a comb. With <laughs> a comb. Or, or do you do it with a, with a brush? I do it with a comb. Does it hurt? I do it with a comb. A no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I do it with a comb. I yeah. With a brush. Clean up. Yeah. yeah. I just comb it forward and comb it to down from the sides. That's right. it, really. That's okay. me. And, uh, yeah, and, and I oil it. I oil it. With, yeah. What else do you do? What, what, with what? Like generally. just getting ready, generally. Yeah, yeah. Like what? yeah. I just, I, I, do you spend time choosing your clothes? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Let that's me say, Wallah al Azim. Allah is my witness. Look, yeah. look, look, my shoes are matching with this. Uh, Let me yeah. tell you something, yeah? Yeah. The maximum time I spend, yeah, yeah choosing my clothes, <laughs> yeah, is one minute. <laughs> it has not. Inc it has well, not you just throw anything with anything. I look and just find anything. Yeah. You know anything what? is clean and you just wear it. It's clean? That's not good, though, man. Can you give me advice, please? Just put a bit more effort in. Just put, put Do you know what I hear? One guy came to me and he was like, yeah. you know, um, one guy came to me. I was wearing like a my my jacket. Yeah. And I was wearing white gloves. I yeah. went to speak because corner, yeah. Them white gloves were Listen, not listen to me. Do you have a budget? Where you when are you gonna have a budget of money to spend? Uh, like a good maybe three or four hundred pounds. When the comms start selling, brother. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come to me when you got there. We'll go shopping together. What you got what what would you recommend that I wear? What I, what should be my style? What should you, be my thing? You said to me you like dressing smart. I before. like it. I enjoy it, but you know, so, I don't want to be that no, guy. No, but you don't no. need to wear a suit to dress smart. You know that. Go on, tell me what you. So you like Hamza's also style. Yeah, smart. Like he's casual. got the he's got the jeans. He dresses very nice. Catch jeans thing. with boots. Um, a nice you know, jumper, I think shirt. that I believe you're giving your dad fashion advice. You know why? Because I saw him speak at school the other day, and he he's, he's looked like you. <laughs> 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 he looked like you, <laughs> but like he was very. <laughs> you know, he was wearing a, <laughs> he was wearing like a a tracksuit, yeah. Adidas. Yeah, yeah. Came yeah. up this and that, and I was thinking, this is Musad man. Did you tell him what to wear? I didn't. You know, I think it's my mom learning from me, and she's just get buying him stuff. My mom that buys my dad's clothes. But it's like <laughs> yeah, it's I, I basically you know in this, in no, this but field, I do I, I do tell my dad you, I do tell my dad you know in Islam you have a mujtahid yeah. and you have muqallid yeah. yeah a mujtahid is someone who can who has the he tools to be able to off. yeah it does the, it does the thing a muqallid is someone who's copy just now copy. I have to be a muqallid in this matter you yeah, know why yeah, yeah. have no knowledge yeah yeah, yeah. I have no knowledge bro <laughs> yeah you're jahil in this matter <laughs> I'm jahil in this matter but I have no idea what I'm doing yeah yeah, yeah. you know one time Allah yeah one time I I put on pajamas. <laughs> gonna, yeah. Listen to me, listen yeah, to me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I took my kids out and whatever, yeah. Yeah. And I was walking this and that, and some guy came, white guy. He looked at me. You know what he said? <laughs> like he goes, "Welcome to Britain. <laughs> Welcome to England." You because you were wearing your pajamas. <laughs> I just, I did not care. I just felt you know, I'm so going on the street. Welcome to England. But sometimes it pays off with dividends, <laughs> you know. Sometimes it pays off with dividends. Like one time, like I saw you, yeah. I was wearing my jacket, hmm. and I was cold that day. My yeah. sister was in the house, yeah? I said to my sister, I need gloves. Yeah, yeah, obviously, she had these gloves, which were like feminine a little bit. White, feminine, right? Uh, and was, uh, someone's out there, look, he's he's trying to, look. You, you, we know, so, what, you, we yeah. know what you mean, yeah, yeah. They had these kind of like 
bells on them or something yeah yeah that's that's yeah female gloves yeah so you wore them so i said you know what my hands are cold i don't give a damn so i yeah. just pulled it off i pulled those two things off yeah okay. and i put the white gloves on i went to speaker school and i was talking to i think it was james that week yeah okay. with my white gloves yeah yeah and i was talking to this and that and i went back and these guys were saying where'd you get your gloves from seriously well lie they said where you get your gloves <laughs> and it's like they were talking to me as if i like i'm a fashion guru expert or something like that <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you, you, you get what I'm saying? You one time, thing. I had my mum had like a like a shawl that she I threw it on me one day. I was cold. Your like, mum's shawl? Yeah, yeah. I put it on. Like I don't, I don't, I have no, you know, like this whole thing of man mas masculine perfume versus yeah. woman's perfume. I don't. Wh who it made that? Matter. It doesn't matter. You know, once I who made that? I like the woman's one. Once I walked into one shop, yeah, <laughs> I like and I, and I go to the and I, and I and I took a jacket and I was like, this is a very nice jacket. I took it to the till. The guy goes, you know, this is a female jacket, right? I go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I, just, I, still, I still bought no, it. No, 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 because yeah. how do you even differentiate? Some of them are more sweet or whatever, yeah, but I with, put it on. I like with it. jackets, to be honest, with female female ones, they. then when I took it home, I started looking in the mirror and I was like, yeah, it does come in a little bit from the waist, but, you know, maybe we'll get away with it. So but for yeah, me, for I me. I just think it's yeah. important to take care of yourself. I think I think it's important to take so care of yourself. So how do you, give me some usur, give me some principles, yeah, for someone who's jahil like me and this bab and this mas'ala, yeah. like someone who does not know how to what to wear the only way it I doesn't do have to make a decision on, on, on the only way I can do it yes. is by showing you and a lot of people have been telling me to you know look, consult the, 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 the sheikh and this the <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's different qawaid in this right? okay, there's different principles can you, can you please yeah? Yeah. Yeah. so for example yeah. one principle is black goes with anything okay so black goes with anything so right. if you wore if you wore a black jumper is that, right a, raci now, is that a racial slur is that a racial no, thing no 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 <laughs> <laughs> black goes with anything yeah White, white goes with everything as well. So when but you're wearing clothes, white and you goes with everything. Yeah, really. Yeah, is that right? So yeah. So if you wore a white jumper right now, it would go with what you're wearing. What lie? Yeah, it would go with what you're. Okay, your so joggers. white and black. What go with everything? What white and black, but doesn't mean you just wear white and black. So what colors would look good on me? Um, I think brown would look good on you. Burgundy. Black, black would look good on you. Yeah. Burgundy would look good on you. Yeah. Bottle green. Is it to do with the skin complexion? Yeah, it's to do with your skin complexion. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. So what do you do? How do you find out your skin color? I'm a similar skin skin color to you, so that's no. But I've got that nice gold look. You got that, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> you got, listen, bro. Listen. On that note. We can do this though. We need to definitely go shopping. I'm I think that shopping. yeah, shopping. But the I'm thing is, shopping. If I can't buy shoes because anyway. you definitely buy st clothes. I know I, you. I can. I can go to. I can get jackets. Like you. you yeah. But but um, trousers and shoes. I have to special order. You know, or I have to go yeah, to them yeah, uh, shops, yeah, big yeah. and tall and for high and mighty and all of them things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What size are you in shoes? Uh, Thirteen now. That's crazy, man. It's not crazy. That's crazy, but it's, it stops at twelve. Do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> so you need to get them Do you know what I say to them what? When I'm walking down I, I go and I say Have you got any size 13 shoes Yeah I don't care what it is Just give you me it. Let me see. Is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to look Just give me the yeah. Let me see what because you got it's so hard for you SubhanAllah And the trousers are even worse uh, You know mm. So I mean Crazy I need to know Well you are 6 foot what 5 6 foot 6 6 foot 6 and a half, 6 yeah. foot 6 boy. Oh 6 foot 6 You could face Anthony Joshua With that height I could, but I don't think I'd get anywhere. I think you'd knock you uh, out. Yeah, yeah. If it, it, it would not be about uh, being. It would just be about surviving one round. If I survive one round, one round, forget about two or three, then I, I, that's it. I've earned my stripes. Allah 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 but if I come in with, if I take him down, he's, he's yeah. in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> on that note bro Jazakallah khairan for coming on the show okay. it's been a pleasure having you I'm sure every single person you know has enjoyed this you know uh, it's been lovely having you and I'm sure we're gonna have you on again and again and again and, and you're gonna make a future. video for like Muslim men how to dress good yeah we will on your channel because yeah. your channel's been dormant what's wrong with you I'm coming back is that you wanna try and coming what, back just, I've been just working on myself a little bit you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing that. Okay, it's so important. you're gonna come back? You should try it sometimes. You know? <laughs> you're very active. <laughs> yeah, no, I've had enough. No, but yeah, man. Jazakallah khairan for coming on the show. Brothers and sisters, this has been rerouted with your host, Musa Adnan. If you have not subscribed to us or if you do not follow us on iTunes, um, you we are on iTunes, we are on Android, uh, Google Play, I think it's called. Google Play, it's called. It's, it's, it's SoundCloud? Sound, I don't think we're on SoundCloud. We're on all of the major platforms Spotify, Apple Music, um, App, uh, the iTunes app and we are also on Google Podcasts Google Podcasts I think that's what it's called uh, so you can watch us on there as well you can listen to us on there and you can subscribe to us until the next episode from myself and Muhammad Hijab Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh
Peace. Dum, 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 bow. Bow.